Some other projects I think that would help is that there's a seniors issue going on in this country, that cultural communities, they want to take care of their parents at home. That's kind of a value I've noticed, especially in South Asian communities. Absolutely. They need help because often those families have two incomes, the mom and dad are both working, not always, but often. You need help at home if grandmother, grandfather are gonna be there. So we need tax credits for that kind of stuff, and we need employment insurance to be more flexible so that families can care for each other. Some people say we're not the party of family values. That's a family value. Family reunification, family value. Family care, family value. Children, a family value. That, that'll build those communities. And there may be, over time, a desire to build seniors housing or long-term care that's specifically aimed at different cultural groups with the food and the entertainment and the care from that community. I think the federal government should help that because as new Canadians become old Canadians, they're gonna say, maybe grandma and grandpa don't wanna live with us. Maybe they wanna live on their own, but they wanna live in a community where the language is understood and oh, yes. where the food is familiar. The federal government could do something on that. So right from you know, kindergarten, right to our old age, the government needs to help these communities. That that's is, a few that, programs. That is a good thought. You ask that me a short a question, I give you a long answer. Oh, no, no, that's fine. You said understand your neighbor. Well, I would say love thy neighbor as thyself, which is the most important commandment right. and the Canadian way to do it. Now, on another issue, I know you are very well involved in a lot of fundraising events and a lot of charities. We had you in one of our charity functions, uh, Cancer Relief for Pakistan, Shaukat Khanam. So what charity work or welfare work are you committed to at this point? There, there are a number of projects. I've had to change my life. For 24 years, I worked as a minister in a church. That was my profession. So I've gone from being a community leader, like a pundit or a rabbi or an imam. That was my job. That's what I did for 24 years. Full-time minister. Full-time. Full time, over full time. Oh, over full time. So I'm used to the 70 hour work week. Okay. So I worked with, with a Christian community and we built affordable housing, we helped Alzheimer's care, we did um, uh, youth at risk programs, uh, kids uh, job training program, uh, we did food bank work, we did all that kind of stuff. So I did that for 24 years. Once you become an NMP, you, you change. One of the things is, you, you use your name and your office to help causes you believe in. Sometimes you just need to show up and it helps the group. Of course. So I was very glad to go to the Shakat Khan, uh, Khanan. Sh Shakat Khanan. Shakat Khanan yeah. uh, with, with Imran Khan, that, that event, that was very good. And also Pakistan flood relief. I was at the uh, NAMF, the North American Muslim Foundation Public Speaking Contest, and a 12-year-old boy was giving his speech, and in it he said words that I think uh, are very important for us. We feed our bodies uh, by what we receive. We feed our souls by what we give. That's what I've learned today. It is the message that comes to me from the great religions, everyone of the world, and it is the message that we must take and practice today. I thank you for being here, and uh, thank you for your warm welcome. G. In Don Valley West, what are the needs? Where are the problems? So I've, I've looked at the after-school program at Thorncliff Public School. And there's a group that Moorlands that runs an after-school program. Parents are working. School ends 3:34 o'clock. Parents aren't home.
till 6 o'clock, 6.30. They got to drive from Brampton. You know what it's like going across the city. Oh, yes. So this, these kids need an after-school program um, that helps the family. And so I've been putting some energy into making sure that that program has the right funding. I didn't know about that program. I, went, I didn't know that community like I do now. So my charity work has become sort of local in helping the different groups in my riding. And it's become global in that I have a large Pakistani population in my riding. The flood relief energy needs to be kept up. This is going to take a decade to fix the infrastructure the, the care, the, the dislocation of people, all of that, the reestablishment of, of, of an agricultural life, Canada needs to be there. So I'm advocating to the Canadian government, don't give up on Pakistan. And I need to do that partly because my writing has a strong Pakistani population. Absolutely. We also have a strong Afghan community. We need to find a way that Canada has the right role in Afghanistan. We have to have the right role of peace building, bridge building, development, aid, transparency, governance, all of those kinds of things. And I'm a fairly non-military kind of guy. We'll have to have a military presence because we can't put an aid worker in there and get them killed. So we have to help them. But I am certainly against a combat role. We have, to, but we can't abandon Afghanistan. Absolutely not. Uh, on that note, I would, on a lighter note, before we take audience questions, I would want to know the story of the moustache. The moustache yeah, is... I've seen you a number of times without it and only recently. Well, I knew I was coming on TV and I wanted to look just like you. <laughs> okay. No, the moustache is for November, for Movember. Movember is, for the month of November, uh, men are, have been invited in Canada to grow a moustache and it is to uh, raise money and awareness for prostate cancer. Okay. And so prostate cancer is, a, is obviously a man's cancer that not many people talk about. They're kind of, it's, it's one of those diseases that, that people are, are nervous about talking about. So we're asked to uh, do this because we need to raise awareness because if you get early detection, you can be cured more easily. And my father has prostate cancer. He's, uh, he's had it for about 10 years and just in the last few months, it's spread into five parts of his body. So we know in our family that he's into the last part of his journey. We know that. Um, and um, my dad is a, is a great man. He's taught me almost everything I know. And um, I needed to do this this year for him. And um, yeah, that's why I'm doing it. That's, that's great. That's a great cause. But it's going to go on December 1st because sure. I think I look way too much like a conservative with this gray mustache. <laughs> okay, if you say so, we'll leave it at that. And I'm pretty sure you are well aware of all the uh, religious occasions that passed. And I would love if you well. would wish on my program, uh, the, uh, let's find out if you know about what has passed. Well, we know that we have just been through the, the uh, Festival of Lights, Diwali. I was at many Diwali uh, celebrations. Okay, so you're and, aware of it. And, and uh, I've written about it as a Christian's perspective on being welcomed into that, that uh, journey from darkness to light, the promise that good will overcome evil. So I, I wish everybody the best of greetings for the Diwali season. We've just come through the second time of Eid. Uh, obviously, uh, Eid al-Futar, it happened uh, a month ago or more, and that was at the end of Ramadan. And now we have just come through uh, the Hajj, and at the end of the Hajj is the second Eid. And after that period of sacrifice, uh, we, we wish Eid Mubarak. And also, the South Asians are uh, celebrating uh, this weekend as part of the, the, the Lunar Festival and the full moon, uh, the birth, birth of the Guru. Um, uh, Guru Nam uh, Nanak Nanak, yes. Nanak. You yes? are on top of things.